And now, ladies and gentlemen, Don't Tell Mama is proud to present... Wait a minute. Is it Alan Tulin or... Al Tulane! When I was a kid, I loved singing show tunes and frolicking naked. My hair was black. I entered grade seven at four foot eleven, determined not to look back. My little face beaming, the dreams I was dreaming were sure to propel me to soaring heights. Now almost retired, say, what is required to see my name up in lights? And in the meantime, meantime, what I'm left with is this in between time. But I'll do it and get to it, cause my friends are gonna see me through it. Meantime, don't mean nothing to posterity, but in the meantime, Sure is a worrying the way the times are hurrying. Meantime, sure is a worrying me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please sit down. And when I was about seven years old, and it's to New Jersey. We're gonna go to Jersey. We're gonna go to Milburn to the Paper Mill Playhouse because it was a production of The Music Man starring the incomparable Robert Preston and I saw it. And it was unbelievable. And that moment right before 76 trombones, he pulls off his sport coat, he flips it inside out, he puts it back on, and he turns into the leader of a marching band. And it was amazing to me. And I, I kind of knew in that instant that I had to do that, and I had to be that. And I was determined to get myself from that dark spot in the balcony into that spotlight downstage center. On the other side of the tracks, that is where I'm going to be. On the other side of that great divide between fame and fortune and me. Gonna put my shadows behind me Keep my inhibitions the axe And tomorrow morning you'll find me On the other side of the tracks Now, the other intense childhood experience Also has its roots at the Paper Mill Playhouse And it was the following year A production of Camelot And therefore, my first exposure to men wearing tights It was almost as exciting as 76 trombones. <laughs> when Stuart Damon, hey Scott, Stuart Damon was playing Sir Lancelot and he made his entrance downstage right in a pair of powder blue, powder blue tights. <laughs> the time went by and I met you and learned a team could consist of two. The way I was was A-OK -okay. And who cared about kids' games? Anyway, last one picked The past is past now, last one picked At last, I'm not the last now A first draft choice on a winning team Like I always dreamed I'd be <laughs> West Arch High School proudly presents the roar of the grease paint, the smell of the crowd. And in the lead role, Alan Tulin. <laughs> Stand well back, I'm coming through. Nothing can stop me now. You know, I've always thought if I could meet just one composer from the, the golden age of Broadway, it would definitely be Jerry Herman. But fortunately, during those times, I had backstage and show business newspaper to scour every single week looking for work. My, my attitude was if, if I could only find a job, I wouldn't have to think about my life. 
Been there, anybody? <laughs> anyway, Chris, how about you? Well, uh, I, I had a technique for reading those, those show business journals. I would start in the back. I would read them backwards because in the back was the late casting section. And I figured if it's late casting, they're already a little bit desperate. So that would give me an edge. So one day I see this ad and it pops out at me and it says, looking for talent for a midday, midtown variety show. Hey, this moment in time, this right time of day. Oh, I love being with you and watching my life at play. My love in your eyes is lighting my dreams. And the colors you choose have touches of blues and greens. This trip into time, this timeless embrace. And like a kid in a store, I'll always want more to taste. And no matter what comes, I know that sun is gonna shine Because of you and me, there'll be this moment in time Now it was around then that I got a call to audition for a new, a new toy that was being launched And the toy was called Gripple, G-R-I-P-P-L-E It was, was kind of like a flat Rubik's Cube and... Um, the idea was that you had to organize these colorful, happy, little cheerful buttons, red, blue, yellow, and green, and move them around and make sense out of it. And they, they didn't know if it was a game or a puzzle, so they wanted a, a kooky, you know, silly voice. So I did a voice like, um, It's Gripple. It's a great new puzzle. It's really a game. I mean, it's a great new game that's really a puzzle. I never get it right, but you can get it. Get Gripple. So, so they hire me to do these voiceover commercials. So they turn me into Mr. Gripple, and I'm traveling around the country and up at FAO Schwartz, and I'm doing demos, and there was all this, this press, all this stuff. That's, that's the Gripple. Turns out there had been a massive recall because the colorful little buttons were popping off and getting caught in children's windpipes. And nobody cared enough to tell Mr. Gripple. But, you know, then came um, Howard Crabtree's Wifty Doo off Broadway, and a couple of years in Tony and Tina's wedding. And um, I used to do a TV show called In the Life. We'd, we'd say things like, coming up next on In the Life, a few minutes with the hours, the lesbian feel good movie of the year. <laughs> and, and bit by bit, the jobs that came out of the, the window in the stationery store were getting, you know, a little bit better. Usually I'd be hired to do a corporate dinner and, and I'd sing some kind of a, a greeting song. I'd be wearing this white dinner jacket and I'd, I'd do my rewritten version of Cabaret and it would always include the name of each and every attendee at the dinner. And one night in Boca Raton, something really incredible happened. The producer of the event, Ellie Lesson, said, Al, if you knew where they were sitting, could you greet them? One by one. <laughs> and now, as I peer through the haze, I see pals from my Emerson days. Here's to you, all the girls and the gays. Suffice it to say, I finally found a way to entertain and be a star that day. When that little kid sat in the balcony at the Paper Mill Playhouse, just dreaming about a life performing. Oh, man, he had no idea of the, the dicey and spicy journey that awaited him. I sliced my slice of life a little thin. I've been on the outside looking in. It's another song from my hero, Jerry Herman. And I did get to meet him. It was at the box office of the Martin Beck. Well, now it's the Hirschfeld. And I had just gotten some tickets for Kiss Me Kate. And I thought the place was empty until I heard a little voice say, two for Jerry Herman, please. And there he was. And I waited for him to finish his transaction. 
And then I approached him and I said, excuse me, Mr. Herman, I just have to thank you for all of the joy you've given me and, and the whole world. You're Broadway. And every time I audition for Harold Hill, I never get the part, but I always sing before the parade passes by. And his face lit up and he said, he could sing that song. That song could have been written for him. And I said, I know. And, and to set up the introduction that you wrote, I always say, give me an old fashioned roll down start going into a strong march in C. Look at that crowd up ahead. Listen and hear that brass harmony growing. over there seem to be telling me where I'm going when the whistles blow and the cymbals crash and the sparklers light the sky hello oh how awful tomaine poisoning when can I be there Before the parade 